Now again, yeah, I don't know I don't know why Windows Media Player doesn't open the file for me. So if you actually try to open music.mp3 or or uh, a video file, what this desktop is going to do is it's going to try and open open uh try and look for a uh, a program that can play the file. And if you guys don't have anything any other any other uh um any other media player other than your default which is Windows media player if you guys are using a Windows then you might you might not be able to open it and this this will this will do nothing again I don't know why it's doing that maybe it just needs since it's a default app since, since Windows media player is a deep default program maybe it needs a special kind of permission which our program does not have I don't know, maybe that's the case. I'm not sure. I didn't really look into it. But if you want this, this line of code to work for sure, just, uh, I mean, it's not going to give us an error. It's not going to make the program crash. It's just not going to open it. But if you guys want to uh, get this line of code working and actually open the file for us as soon as we hit enter, just go on and down go on to Google and download and search this download VLC media player and this is really a great a great uh, media player because it's much better than Windows it can play a lot more uh, a lot more uh, file formats than Windows Media Player and it can also do some conversion for you for example convert .avi files it can also play a can, it can play music videos and you know stuff like that and it can also convert convert uh, from one file format from .mp3 to .mp4 from .avi to .mp4 it can do a lot of things so it's just a lot better than Windows Media Player and I'm not I'm not dissing on Windows Media Player and obviously it's a great it's a great tool, but I just prefer I just prefer VLC better. So go ahead and do that. It's it's free, so it doesn't hurt, and it's only like four megabytes, so it's not it's not big. Go ahead and download and install that. And this this line of code, when you hit enter, whatever video file or uh, sound file that you open, it should this line of code should open it using the VLC that you installed. And now we are done. Thank goodness we're done. Congratulations. Uh, in, our, in, in my next video, or in this video, I'm going to show you just a quick demo. Just to show you guys that it actually works. And I'm just not talking out of my ass. Alright, I'll take a little break for now. <clears throat> um, I'm sorry about that, guys. We're actually not done yet. Um... You actually need to add a little something inside our book, our book class that I forgot to add. So just go on over and head to your book class, and just scroll down to to our two string method. And what we're gonna do is just gonna add the amount of uh, we're just gonna add extra information. We're gonna let the user see the amount of files that they have in this book. So let's get started. String vim names. I'm gonna set that equal to nothing. String vim amount. Set that equal to this. Plus string dot value of vim dot. Sorry, what am I? Oh, sorry, vims.size. And what this is doing is it's just converting this integer, or, yeah, this integer, by using the value of method of the string class. Converting it from an integer to a string. And then we're just going to end the parentheses here. 
And you're going to see why I'm doing this. I create an iterator pointing to a vim object. I call it iterator i. Now let's ext extract iterator from the uh, list of vim iterator while i dot as next vim names plus equals <clears throat> and again this plus equals is the same thing as vim names plus but we're just going to use plus equals just so you guys know that it works <clears throat> I dot next, which is the next object, the vim object, and we're just going to get the name of that vim object, and we're just going to add a comma. And inside this return block over here, we're just going to add after price, and here in this new line, we're just going to add vim files. then enter our vim amount and then just add in a colon space now then add in a uh, all the names vim names then just add in a new line for good measure Then control shift F. And now we're completely done, I promise you guys. Now I'm gonna demo uh, how to run this app this program that we made. So go on over and run <clears throat> our little program that we made. Alright, just click uh, run, run main system. Oh it's already running. Um, well just run as Java application there we go uh, 